welcome you all here and thank you for coming today. The first item on the agenda, approve the minutes of the October 27, 2015 regular meeting. Approve the minutes, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any comments on the minutes? Hearing that, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item two on the agenda is receiving place on file drainage repairs. Farmers have been busy, so we have quite a few. <laughs> Uh, drainage district number 16 and 31 Calhoun, lateral two and four, Bolton Township, section 29. There's a beaver dam to be fixed between County Road D20 and P29. Uh, drainage district number 234, Hardin Township, section 14, burn outlet needs to be built up, may need to be extended, turned in by Leo Calvert. Drainage District Number 69, Upper Bolton Township, Section 8, Bank West Side, Water Over Top, Clean Out the Dim Surface Drain Plug with Rocks, turned in by Dwayne Newell. Drainage District Number 69, Bolton Township, Section 27, Bank Has Slept, turned in by Dwayne Newell. Drainage District Number 37, Wasparilla Township, Section 25. Surface drain limit is buried south side 200 feet of East Lansing Avenue, drained by Dale Peterson through Randy Wilk. Chairman, I'll move that we receive place on the file for the drainage repairs. Second. A motion and second. Any comment on the drainage repairs? Hearing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3 on the agenda. Approved salary increase for Melinda Jacobs to 1872 per hour, effective October 24, 2015, per labor agreement. I move to approve the salary increase. Second. I have a motion and a second on the salary increase. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4 on the agenda. Receive a place on file the position change of MRI, MRI Hickey, transport officer, irregular part time to part time correctional officer at the rate of $14.79 per hour, effective November 3rd, 2015, for recommendation of Steve Alfred's jail administrator. Mr. Chairman, I move item four. I'll second that motion. A motion and a second. What's your regular part-time and part-time? What's that? What's the difference between a regular part-time and part-time? Your regular part-time is just on call for the transports. So all they do is transports. So they don't work in the jail. And she's, she's going to be a part-time jail. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 5 on the agenda. Approved hiring and employment of Austin Pohl, part-time correctional officer, effective November 3rd, 2015, at the rate of $14.79 per hour, per recommendation of Steve Alfred's jail administrator. All moved by number 5. Mr. Chairman. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6 on the agenda. Approved hiring and employment of Stacy Underwood, Type is advanced at the rate of $13.95 per hour, effective November 9, 2015, per recommendation of Jessica Romanot, Child Support Recovery Unit Supervisor. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 7 on the agenda. Receive and place on file appointment of Charles A. Walker to serve as the Treasurer's Representative on the Compensation Board. Item 7. Motion and a second. Any comments on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8 on the agenda. Receive and place on file manure management plant updates for John Field facility in Section 28, Calcorn Township, and Greg Mora Farm in Section 31, Colfax Township. Moved by the lead. Mr. Chair. Second. That motion and a second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 9 on the agenda, adopt resolution updating weight limit embargoes on bridges. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to be accepted adopt the resolution uh, embargoes on bridges. presentation. I second that. Motion second. Go ahead, Randy. Okay, uh, the reason for the embargo is you last approved the list of bridges with vehicle weight limits in uh, December 16, 2014, and since then we uh, we need to we had some uh, more recent bridge inspections and we had some bridge replacements. 
so uh, it's timely to approve a new resolution. And uh, currently there are 47 bridges with weight restrictions, and there were 85 posted bridges in 2003, and there were 60 in 2010. And uh, there is a bridge under contract right now that's going to start on Monday. It's uh, uh, on 160th Street, north side of Harlan Rogers Park. That's a posted bridge. And by next spring will be replaced. And then uh, in 2016, I'm hoping to let and replace seven more posted bridges. So we're making progress. Are we catching up? Are we losing? Are we well, we're gaining on it. I mean, the uh, you know, just it's just a we have 200 plus or minus structures that need to be inspected at least every 24 months or sooner by law. And as the some of the older bridges, okay. which are not posted, get inspected, they we can get some, you replace some, you get rid of some, and then some some get posted <coughs> that hadn't been posted before. But in summary, we're gaining and doing an okay job of gaining in the right direction. So this kind of puts anybody that drives over about their own risk. Since yes. Yes. Yeah, it 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 takes a 90,000 pound load over. It protects our liability, yes. It, it, there's a, what we try to do is have a, a posted limit at the beginning of the intersection and one at right before the bridge. So they have two opportunities to see what, what's legal and not legal. So if a farmer drives down there with a 90,000 pound semi load and it's a 20,000 ton bridge, would they be liable to consider? It's, it applies to everybody and yeah, there would be some, yeah, there'd be a uh, county that could uh, go after the individual causing that damage. It, agriculture, no one's exempt from bridge posting. It's, it's, applies to all vehicles no matter what uh, type of business you're in. So you want us to go over to Bob Keese's Christmas duty? I went over. <laughs> I'm guilty as a charge. But the idea is that you break it. Yeah, you break it. Yeah. 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 So. Well, at least we're, we're trying to catch up on it. Yeah, do you, do you have, have a guess on how many bridges we've replaced like in the last 10 years? Oh gosh, uh, it, you know, minimum of uh, well four to five. You try to every year. Some are smaller, some are larger. It's so let's do it here. It's been six or seven. So yeah, it, it kind of bumps around a little bit depending on budget and cost of that location versus another location. Yeah. So I, I can get, I can get that easy. exact number. No, I don't know. Yes, but yeah, in in the last ten years, we've made pretty good progress on the yeah. bridges. Yes, yeah. but there is a lot of out there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, there have been just a couple minor changes. Uh, uh, two, uh, two roads that were designated as no, no snow removal had to be removed because uh, down south of Harcourt, there's a couple of confinements were uh, constructed. And so, however, I did, you know, we still have about 73 miles of unpaved roads designated as no snow removal. And uh, I've said this before, but uh, the benefits are that you don't have any aggregate loss during due to traffic kickoff. I mean, you know, the traffic can kick off aggregate, uh, and then you also can lose aggregate due to snow removal by our employees. And uh, the other, probably as important as anything, not removing <coughs> snow in 73 miles uh, reduces maintenance costs and improves service on the other roads. And uh, based on our operating costs. We believe there's a savings of approximately $1,200 per plowing event by having the 73 miles of not having to remove snow and kind of conservative that we believe that when even a snow event definition is where you have to go down that road and remove the snow. And we believe that we, we reduce our cost by $1,200. I think it's great 
program, but if, the, if somebody has a problem with their building being closed, they, I mean, we, won't, we won't work with them if they come up and have a valid reason why the snow should be removed from that road. We will look at that and work with them. Any other comments? Any other all in favor? Aye, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 11 on the agenda. Adopt resolution to establish policy and level of service in respect to clearance of snow or ice and maintenance of electric county secondary roads during the winter months. A motion and second. Uh, the you know, Code of Iowa says if you, uh, we've had a policy for a long time, several years, the code says if you have a policy and you follow it, you reduce your liability. Uh, the reason that I'm requesting you resolute this uh, Again, is uh, there have been no changes, but the last time we did approve this policy was in November of 2010, and that's when we started building no snow removal roads. Uh, but I think it's, it's been five years. I think it's probably helping the current board uh, pass a resolution. But I want to stress again, there hasn't been any verbiage change. It's just that I think it's good to renew the resolution. Uh, with regard to snow removal, we the, uh, we'll go out as early as 4 a.m. and stay as late as 6 p.m. And we do not go out any other time unless it's a special emergency or working with the sheriff or, or what have you. Um, again, it's our goal to pave routes. Uh, all roads need to be open. We, we the policy does state that we goal is to get the paved routes open uh, as quick as possible and uh, and then get to the gravels. Uh, sometimes that will happen somewhat simultaneously, but I'd like to advise, you know, there, there are some some uh, snow uh, storm events where people uh, call and complain that we haven't been on the road, but we, we do make an attempt to continually plow the roads, but when it becomes uh, hazardous or drifts in directly behind us and things like that, we may call off uh, the plows off the unpaid roads and constantly on the paved roads. So uh, again, it's, it's kind of a judgment thing. And then we like to think that in a uh, work day of 4 a.m. to 6 p.m., we can normally get all the roads open uh, to, to the rest of us. Again, there's always an exception to that. If you have consecutive snows and the wind changes direction every other day and uh, high wind speeds, uh, you can plug things up kind of tight. But, I mean, a uh, uh, normal average winter, we like to think we can get all the roads, uh, be on all the roads in, in, in that, that time frame. Questions for Andy? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye, aye. Those motion carries. Item 12 on the agenda. Approve an authorized chair to sign the utility permit from New High Valley Telephone to bury, bury fiber optic cable to New Hawk confinement in 1338 290th Street from Section 10, Township 87 North, Range 37 West, Rolling Township. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the utility permit. Second. I motion to second. Any comments on that? None on that one. all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13 on the agenda. Approve an authorized trade assignment to the Olympic Permit from the Lehigh Valley Telephone to bury fiber optic cable from 1435 to Street to New Hawk Refinement in Section 34, Township 88, North Range 30 West, Old County. Mr. Chairman, I move item 13. Second the motion. Motion and second. And yeah, the this, this site, I, I'm going to recommend you go ahead and approve it. Uh, there's been a little confusion between Lehigh Valley. Uh, the applicant and uh, his entrance permit, and uh, I've got some emails spread uh, that you copied and Sheila's copied this morning. Uh, I think the request by VI Valley is to have us approve this, and if it happens to be an erroneous site, then they'll just retract it. But I, I think they want to get it into the hopper because of the timing and the weather conditions. So they can provide the utilities in a timely manner, but I think there's a question about if this is an exact location we need to be. Well, I'll tell you. I think it's better to prove it and uh, than not today. And they're very this in our right. Yes, that's what the proposal is. Yeah, this fiber optic telecommunication cable. What is there a question on? Entrance permits, and then they measure from the corner to where the driveway is, so we can spit them 
say is the Lehigh Valley got contacted to, to run some utilities to this location. Uh, he's got it marked on the map. We do not have a 911 address for him. And we don't have an entrance agreement that matches up for it yet. But talking to the Lehigh Valley representative, they, they referred to that we would still consider approving it based on the information they received. My problem with it is that, though, that by approving this the way it is, or could they argue that we've approved that address? Hey, I'm, I'm just not real comfortable doing it until they get the other things done that are supposed to be done first. Well, I just don't want to, I don't know if I'm saying that clearly. Yeah, I, if, I mean, we're approving something for an address that doesn't exist today. Would that be a correct statement? Right, and then you could also say that if you pick the utility, electrical, telephone, gas, whatever, a lot of times they just replace a line in the middle of, middle of uh, that doesn't have an address, and they need to do it because they need to upgrade their line. But no, I think maybe the best best thing to do would be just take, because we don't have all the data we need. Yeah, in other words, I guess I have no problem approving them putting utilities into whatever property. That's not the question. It's just whether by improving it the way it is, we're improving the address and two. So I so I'd make a motion we table this and until we get verification of the actual improvements at the bank of the address. And I I I'll second that. That motion is back on the table. Do we need that to do that or no discussion? Appeal hearing notice to ABA DBA 2015-09 Brillman Foskin Business Location 2406 235th Street described as Lot 7, the County Auditor's Taxation Class in Section 9, Township ADA 1928 West, referred to as Trolls Extension. Chairman Randall, number 14.
realize that it was a problem that was going to be on occupied and just repair or to recognize. And that's why we got with the contractor and we still need to have the new roof installed within 30 days. Um, and also, we're just asking that you work with us to, to do that. We've got the weeds all cleaned up, the houses, um, the areas there, and there was a pickup part there with removed that. Um, so that's we understand the concern.
Just to me, I can see it's the roof. It need, there is no siding on it there. Those are both things. There's are siding on the front and the back. It's just the ends of the house were, like Sheila said, it, it was brought together. When did you plan on moving into this house? Well, that's what we need to know. I'm at the age where I should be retiring, but we'll with this unemployment for two years, both of us. Uh, why, we're now on our feet. We have property where we're living for sale, which will um, free us to come back. So I would like to think that a year, year and a half from now, we can maybe move back here. We would certainly like the opportunity to get it completely sealed so there's no chance that there's you know, any birds inside the house or anything like that, and make it more appealing to the neighbors. You know, they have a good relationship with the neighbors. And they, right, the neighbors say they are. Well, I think what they're going to say to you and what they're going to say to me is probably two different things. But I think it's a disservice to the people who live in that neighborhood who need something there since 1987. And then we gave you five more years and it's still sitting in the same condition. We recognize our faults and they were beyond our control. Um, what we, we feel now that we can rectify that problem. And we need some time to prove to you that we will. And we plan to do the work ourselves and Before not all this kind of work. So we've gone the route to contacting contractors to uh, you know to be able to do the work when we do that. Yeah. Do you have uh, let me ask you this, um, if you feel that this is something that you're going to invest in and you can as your retirement home, do you have an idea how much investment you're you're looking at to get this into a livable position? Uh, it's hard to get the bids right now. Everyone's madly trying to get ready for winter. But uh, I'm guessing we're talking to $10,000. Does the interior of the house, does it have an electrical service? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, the service isn't plugged in, but yes, it's a so, service. Okay, is that interior of the house all wired? Yes. And that wiring's been sitting there since 1987? Yes, and sheetrock and insulated. Copper wire, it's not aluminum, but aluminum throws, but this is, I, I don't think there's a problem with the electric one. Ten thousand dollars didn't put the roof on the house. Uh, yeah. We have well, a we've big, actually already got the roof and the material and the roof, uh, we have it done for a fraction. Uh, I guess I'm curious, what if you were, do you still have the cars in the bottom of the house? Yes, I do. So if you were calling that such hard time, why didn't you sell a car? I've owned cars for 35 years. They're my friends. So. Mm -hmm. Well, your neighbors, <coughs> we, I was out talking to your neighbors too. Sure. And they gave us a whole different story. I mean, they're sick of it. They're tired of the mess. Your neighbors told us that they didn't want it because they wanted to look good, not you. you know, I mean, you didn't, they were wanting it, they're not getting paid. That's what they told us. I did pay. Well, that's what she did. That's, that's what she, she said. She was yeah. over there three or four times helping us today. And she was. Because she wants it cleaned up because she can't. For well, sure. Would you want that? Would you want that house sitting to sell more houses for sale in Wyoming? No. Yeah, that, there you go. I mean, what would you expect the people in Wyoming to do that house? They're justified. We recognize. Yes. That. We're saying we will. We just, we just need to be able to go on to correct the situation. So, um, what would you say? I'm talking to both Sheila and the here. What would you say would be um, agreeable? Is there a dirt floor in the property? In the garage. 
the garage area, but not the house area. No, the house is totally finished. And the sheetrock, there's a I'm not sure there is now. Several years ago, there were, and that's the, we didn't wipe off the windows. I, 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 we've been there for a couple of days. We've seen the animals. There's nothing to draw the animals there. There's no food or water. Um, the, they uh, uh, they don't. I, I don't. I don't think there are. Um, and the neighbor, three two houses down, had a raccoon in his. <coughs> <laughs> but, but I don't believe we have anything uh, in the house. Well, I tell you what I'm, I'm concerned about in that. Is, and I, I, you know, I certainly understand that this is, this is um, uh, something that you, know, you want to do and that you, uh, everybody has some things that happen in their lives that cause the plans to change. Um, but what I'm most concerned about is that there's a, a good understanding of what kind of investment. satisfy me is if uh, you were able to come back with estimates uh, showing what this is going to cost and what's going to be done so that uh, the board can see that this will be taken to a point where it's, where it's livable <coughs> and that you're aware of this and that you're, you're getting contracts signed We have, but yes, we have, a, have our property for sale out there. Right? So How long have you had it for sale? How long have you had it for sale? Uh, six months. Uh, we, we live in an area that produces coal and um, um, oil. You've heard how bad coal is. Uh, two of the coal mines are in bankruptcy, and two are closed and one being torn down. And uh, so, set aside for this uh, now, and uh, this is contingent on that, but, but that would help us naturally. <clears throat> well, here's where I stand, pretty much what Clark said, um, maybe a little different than he, I don't know that we want to get into the term of whether there's proper light fixtures in the house, but, but for sure the outside utility, it needs to be livable, yeah. and each of us live differently, but it's got to be livable to me, you'd have to Roof, you'd have to have siding. Um, those we have, yeah, we have. I mean, and, and so I guess what I'm saying is, I, you have long enough, in my opinion, to take care of the property. Uh, it's unfortunate you've had some bad times, but you've had a long time to do it. Uh, you've chosen to keep the property instead of sell it when you, things turn bad. Um, we tried to sell it again. Yeah, and, and it's my opinion that you're not anywhere close to doing this for $10,000. Um, so for me not to go ahead and go to demolish
loss of property, I would need a, a signed contract with a, con a reputable contractor that shows us the amount of money to take all of this up to date uh, and a fairly stringent time constraint, which is going to be part of this time of year. Um, I wouldn't want to let it go six more months. You know, I think I'd have to have a lot of evidence that the house was going to be totally livable and updated within a fairly short period of time, where I think we're just going to find ourselves making a decision now. To a certain degree, I'm between a rock and a hard place on this one in that if, if improvements were made in 2009 and then it was allowed to sit for six years, I, and I, I empathize with you in terms of whether it be health problems or employment problems, income problems, tax problems, whatever it is, uh, but apparently throughout that six year period, to a certain degree, it must be out of sight, out of mind in that the, the neighbors clearly have said that there, there's a, 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 that you ignored the property to some degree. And we do have a responsibility to see we to the neighbors. I don't necessarily agree with uh, Mr. Dinklaw in terms of completely doing your house by virtue of the fact that I don't know, I'm not seeing the house inside, but I do know that uh, things are not cheap. They're expensive when it comes time to remodeling and improving assume that Sheila is correct in terms of replacing a lot of wood that's there. It's gone to the point now where apparently some has to be replaced and most of it has to be replaced. And yet you're in a situation where you apparently are trying to sell an asset and uh, maybe now have sufficient funds to, uh, to begin. But I question whether or not there's enough there to do the whole thing. Uh, I would tend to agree me somewhat have to agree uh, with uh, Merrill here, but I, I believe that his plan is probably on target. Uh, out, again, out of respect to the neighbors and also the notion that they, they, from 2009 to today, minimal more about So to that end, I, I would <coughs> certainly support some plan that says, okay, by such and such date, all this is going to be done, and that may not be able to be feasible from your standpoint financially, I don't know that. But it is what it is. If it makes you feel better, that was Clark's plan, actually. Oh, so you know, also I feel much better than Clark's plan. I was just about ready to call it. Well, come in the crowd. Yeah. I'm assuming, my name is Mike Dutcher, I'm assuming they were violating some kind of code, county code, state code, they're in violation of some law. Okay. County ordinance. Correct. They've been in violation of that ordinance for six years. The last thing they did anything was in 2009. They've been in violation for six years. Now you're going to give them another month. I'm sorry, I don't know the Hoskins. I think the county and the Hoskins both dropped the ball. We shouldn't be talking about this six years after the fact. If that house was next to mine. I'd have been at every supervisor meeting until it was resolved. I think it's a disgrace that it went this far. I'm sorry, it's, you know, it is what it is. They've got assets they could sell. They could have done something. Now they're here pleading six years later. I think it's a farce. <coughs> <coughs> Any other comments? Okay, close the hearing.
see your progress on the Weber's when you can. Um, we are interested in getting this solved. This is a terrible problem. You know, and if it needs rise. Back for another trip. Question I would have is who do you feel Fletcher so that we're not running into problems 60 days or 30 days or whatever from now? I would believe there needs to be some sort of list of requirements. And I mean, otherwise, they're going to come to us with a list they think, and then we may not agree with that. I mean, does anybody think we could come up with a base list of what we're going to expect to be done, such as siding or whatever? Or do you feel it's just that we make a determination that it's livable? What's livable? That, you know, because yeah. I'm trying to make that. I, I agree with you. Sheila, Sheila, you've made the determination that this is a violation of state local ordinances or codes. And so, um, you know, I think it's, it's imperative that there's a clear definition on what exactly that is a violation and that's here. Well, I think we gave them that in 2009. Okay. And so, so we have that somewhere, a document that says we want the roof fixed, the siding fixed. So we could start with that. We have an action plan. That's my guess. I still, <clears throat> I would like to see this come back within 30 days, simply because of the, the extended time that we've already had. And it doesn't mean that we have that contract, but we certainly, I would like to see numbers. I'd like to see exactly what the folks are going to have. And we can see a significant progress. And then drop the data when it's going to be done. One. Pretty close. Pretty close. I mean, okay, give them a couple of years. No, no, no. It's going to be in 60 days. In 60 days, we could have the roof and the siding done. You know, like, Sheila, the validations uh, that you allude to in terms of the state, um, by satisfying or those regulations, does then the property become uh, acceptable for occupancy? They correct what they build by, the state code, yes. by go by state code. If they do the improvements, then ultimately the goal would be, or the, the, the condition of the property is acceptable for occupancy. Is that right? So at that point, you could rent if you had to, and or I mean, I don't know what your situation is up there. Uh, I, I hasten to say that you continue.
you may be put a bunch of money to that property, but I'm going to vote to tear the property down. So I think we have to put the teeth in it to, we're not going to keep doing this every few months. I don't know how we word that or how we get to that point. But here again, I completely agree with you. What you know, so you drop dead date if you want to call it that, uh, by virtue of the fact that this has been on for a long time. Uh, yeah, but I agree. Now, what's that date? We got the winner to deal with. Thirty. 
contractors to do the work till spring. So are we comfortable today allowing them this procedure, but also knowing it's not going to get to that final date till next spring? And are we comfortable? With that? I, the neighbors won't. <coughs> Before you vote, you should seriously consider the rights of the neighbors. I think the neighbors are are the ones that are being punished here in a way. Six years. You know, you're lucky you're not living next to me. Like I say, I've been at every hearing, every board meeting. It's just ridiculous. Um, I'd like to. Some people live in a trash bowl and other people have to have a right. uh, I was going to say, I'd be innocent in adhering to the state codes. The ultimate goal of the state code is to have it as sort of just an issue where it could be occupied. Sheila, what's the, what's the ordinance say? Can we demand occupancy?
legitimate gripe. I'm sure they did. But be that as it may, as it stands now, uh, I tend to agree that we ought to work to get these people some, but I think we hold their feet to the fire in terms of getting progress and getting the thing back to where it's been. This is driven by neighbors. for their complaint, like a code violation or something. It can't be just, I woke up, I'm not in a good mood, I don't have any coffee in me. There's got to be some kind of code violation. If they're not violating any codes, and if, if I can leave a farmhouse sit out there for 10 years, I guess they're not against any laws, are they? They're violating the dilapidated building. They are? Same thing. They would be, they would be violating the same exact thing. We just don't go out and pursue Unless like somebody brings it to your attention. When people and neighbors get upset and come complain, then we act on those complaints. We don't just drive around and get them. Does that make sense? Did I get a copy of that dilapidated? It's Where can I get that? It's on the website. It's on the website? Yeah. Anyway, do you want to clarify your motion? I probably. <laughs> I think I'm going to do that, but I'm going to try and do it. Yeah. But basically, somehow, I want to make a motion that we will allow them.
15 on the agenda. You need to just one right. You need to get what she wants. I'll just promise that those people have Item 59, Consent Agenda. Is John Talbert, Executive Director of Iowa Drainage District Associated, Update the Board. That's 
probably a much more difficult road. So right now, everything is sort of on hold. Uh, we don't know how it's going to be resolved, but you know, as it works its way through the courts, we'll certainly keep you all informed on uh, what the potential implications of that rule is. Uh, the last thing I talk about is, uh, of all things, the Wine Waterworks. Um, you all are aware, of course, that we have um, county supervisors, acting as trustees, and, and three counties uh, representing 10 range districts in those counties that have been sued by the Wine Waterworks. Um, that suit was filed in, in March of this year. Uh, it's currently set for trial uh, in August of 2016 in Federal District Court in Sioux City. Um, I suppose the possibility always exists that that deadline could change, but my understanding is what I'm told about the, the judge that is set to schedule to hear this is that he's pretty much a stickler. This is, this is the time we've set. This is when we're going to try the case be ready to try the case. So right now, the trial is set for August of 2016. Uh, what the lawsuit seeks to do uh, is, is basically uh, <coughs> declare uh, through the courts uh, that Drain Hile is a point source uh, and thus subject to EPA regulation. Uh, that is currently not the case, as you know. Um, so that will change if this lawsuit is successful. Uh, we'll also Assuming we go down that path and worst case scenario that that happens, uh, we'll push you in the situation of having to get what are called NPDES permits, which should stand for National Pollution Discharge Elimination System. NPDES permits, which are issued by the Department of Natural Resources, <coughs> that permit would have to be granted to be able to drain land. Um, what does that mean? We don't know. Currently, we don't have to get that permit, so we don't know exactly what is involved, and I can tell you that the infrastructure, the regulatory infrastructure, is not in place to handle, those, handle, handle that kind of permitting for drainage districts. Um, I've been told that if you want to get an NPDES permit, number one, you've got to hire somebody to, to do it for you because of the amount of paperwork involved. Um, probably going to cost you upwards of $15,000 to go through the process. And it's probably going to take at least a year. That's now. That's not assuming that we're going to have a bunch of new permit requests. And we don't know, for example, with 3,000 plus drainage districts, does that mean one permit per, per county? That's unlikely. Does that mean one permit for each drainage district? Does that mean something else? We don't know. That's not spelled out in there. <coughs> so it would be extremely prob problematic to try to figure out how that would work, the time delay in that, uh, what would be involved in the process of getting those permits is simply not something that would work under our current structure. Um, so the case has been filed. Set for trial. Um, everything is pretty much moved behind the scenes now. Uh, lawyers getting ready, um, you know, looking at expert witnesses, uh, setting trial strategy. The counties, the, the lawyer for the counties, uh, have asked the judge to dismiss the case. The uh, judge has not ruled on that yet. Um, I read the brief. I, I think that they made a pretty strong case for the dismissal. But whether that will happen or not is, is up to the judge. Um, IDA at this point is not intervening in the case. And, and a little bit of background in terms of what that means. Uh, right now, we're supporting the counties indirectly. Uh, the IDA attorneys are, are assisting the law firm is working with the counties, uh, but we are not an intervener in the case. If we, IDEA, decides to intervene, that makes us a direct party to the case. It brings us in to the litigation. And that has pluses in terms of, you're then inside, in terms of all the information flow, 
you're then a voice at the table when legal strategy is, is discussed. You're a voice at the table when arguments. You're, you're able to, you know, query uh, the waterworks people. You're part of that whole process. That's the plus. The minus side is cost. That raises the ante significantly. Um, and secondly, if you lose, it potentially puts you on the hook covering my waterworks cost. I mean, you know, that, that process can go both ways. If counties win, they can petition the court and ask the court to um, have the Wine Waterworks cover the county's legal cost. And I would expect that to be the, the case if that request would be made. But of course, if lose, it can go the other way too, where the Wine Waterworks can say, okay, we won the case, and now we want the counties to cover our legal bills. So that process can work both ways. So there's there's definite pluses and minuses in terms of intervention right now. We have not decided to interview. We put that decision off. That'll be up to the IDEA board. Um, but uh, like I said, cases move behind the scenes. We're we're watching it very closely, and we'll uh, assist and do what we can as, as we go through the next year. Questions? We just want you to know that we sent our best man to serve on your board. <laughs> okay, appreciate that. <laughs> I just think that I don't, the, the public doesn't realize how big this one waterworks suit can be and affected the, the, the farmers in the area <coughs> and, the, and the water. I mean, it's, it's everybody deserves clean water, but you know, if they shut off our spigots, we can't do any food here. You don't want to eat. Bigger than people realize. Maybe. Well, Keith, we need to talk tomorrow because I saw an article in the paper today that Bill Stowe, if he stays till 2020, gets a half million dollar bonus. Wow. So, well, I've been with IDEA 13 years now. Anything else for John? Thank you for coming, John. Appreciate your comments and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Citizens' opportunity to address the board of is not on the agenda. We're here to talk about. Uh, board of Supervisors Committee reports? I don't have a committee report, but I did want to put it out there. Hopefully the paper will uh, uh, run it again. That this 16% uh, state order, uh, the citizens, commercial property owners have until the 9th of November at 4.30 to make an appeal. Uh, they can appeal only the 16% uh, increase, uh, and the normal appeal will still exist in the spring. But, uh, the, Monday the 9th at 4.30, if anybody wants to appeal that, they start with going to the assessor's office and filling out paperwork. Uh, sorry, just, just a report from County Social Services. Um, still a lot of things up in the air on the pressurization of Medicaid, uh, but I do want to make sure that the public knows that you know, people are still going to get service. So it is just, it's a funding issue.